We are working in oils, working on an eight by 10. This is a Fredericks watercolor canvas board. And you might be thinking oils, watercolor. It is very smooth. I will say a regular canvas board from Fredericks, I would probably go with over this or one of their oil primed canvas boards, but it's what I had. So if you're going to be painting super thick, thick paint, then you want a canvas that has a little bit more tooth to it than this. I'm gonna put my layers on pretty thin, so it'll be fine. I'm going to start with putting out my colors. I am using Payne's Gray first. So we'll throw that down. It's kind of greenish gray, gray color. And with oils, you really don't need that much. A little bit does go a long way, much more so than what you get with acrylics. And let's get some phthalo blue out. You can use any color you want and you can start with any base color. The reason that I've started with this bright base color is I want for this design for that background to peek through. So it's almost like this flame inside the bird. Gorgeous look, a look I love. You can use hot pink looks great. You can do this with like an, any bright color will work, but the point is you want something bright that's going to show through for this technique and this style. The supplies I'm using are listed in the video description. I use for the black and white Weber's Permelba. This, I absolutely love. These paints are just, they're so good for oils. Like the, the white is more opaque, the black gets super, super dark. So you don't get that kind of grayish tint where it's muddying up with the other colors. And for oils, I love that. And then the other paints that I'm using are a combination of Winsor & Newton Artist Colors and the Grumbacher, their paints are really nice. The Grumbacher, and the, so difference in the paints, you may also have Winsor & Newton Winton color. Now these are the ones that I usually will link in the video description. They're a student grade paint. They work just fine. Most of the colors are light fast, just fine. The big difference is that the better paints typically have a more buttery feel to them. They're much softer. Whereas the Winsor & Newton Winton paints, you're gonna be spending a little bit more time thinning that down with your mixing medium because they are kind of firm. Oil paints can be very expensive to get started with, but they don't need to be. I can get somebody started with oils for about the same price I can with acrylics. It's just, you don't need to run out and buy the most expensive paints. Like I was saying, the Winsor Newton Winton colors, they're fine. They're hard. <laughs> You're gonna have to spend some time softening them with your mixing medium, but the, it's, it's font like, I, I still have some that I use because I can't bring myself to throw away perfectly good supplies. So I'm going to put in the middle of my palette here, some liquid, and this is what I thin, you know, this clogged so it's too thin coming out. This is what I thin my paints with. I may need to put a little bit more, we'll see. And liquid is a fast drying medium. So what I paint tonight will pretty much be dry by tomorrow. Now the brushes that you choose for oil paints are gonna be a bit different. And I'm gonna be talking a lot about the difference between oil and acrylics because I, I typically teach in acrylics, but we'll go over some of the difference between oils and the acrylics. One are going to be the brushes. I generally want a brush that is going to be a bit more firm. You can see that's got a lot more spring to it versus let's see one. Can you see how bendy that is? Look with the oil, see how much more firm? This one's much bendier. With acrylics, it's a softer paint, I want a softer brush. It's not that you can't use either or when it comes to acrylics or oils, but I'm typically gonna lean towards brushes that are a little bit more stiff for oils than I would for acrylics, because softer paint, boy, harder paint. So this one is, as much as I hate generic art supplies, I love, you guys know, for our oils or acrylics, I love generic paint brushes. This is a generic from Hobby Lobby. I'm not a fan of Hobby Lobby, Lo especially their freaking acrylic paints are terrible, but I do love these brushes. So anyway, we're going to start by painting in the background. Now, this painting, is supposed to be very loose in style. I'm not gonna have a ton of tiny detail. I want my brush strokes to show. That is a very intentional thing for this painting. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of liquid and I'm going to start with the bottom with the Payne's Gray and just work my way up into the more blue tones. So I've loaded up some Payne's Gray. I'm not gonna worry about the white just yet. Nope, I lied. I definitely need some white to make that more opaque. Actually, I'll just probably mix a little black, mix my own gray so that it's more opaque because that, um, there we go. That, okay, now the color looks too blue. I'm sorry to keep messing with this. It's just, this is not good. It's not really helping that much. 
um, once I get a little bit more color on here. This is such a pretty bright orange too. That's a little bit annoying that you can't see how, I mean, we're talking, it's almost like a fluorescent. It's so bright. And what I used to get that base layer, that was done in acrylic. So I guess I should back up and give you a little bit more of that lesson. This was done, the base was acrylics. You can paint oils over acrylics, just not the opposite way. So my base is just acrylics and I used primary red mixed with cadmium red medium hue, which is basically orange. So it's like this bright, in person it is bright. Okay, let's see if I can get this to look half decent then on camera, that's close. Now what I want to do is leave my brush stroke showing. I want this bit of orange you can see peeking through, well mine's more red than what you guys are seeing, but I want that poking through. That is very important for this style. Let your brush stroke show. Now what you don't wanna do with this style, one, we don't wanna hold the brush up here. You're holding the brush back here. We're going for a loose style. You're gonna get a much like more natural feel, hold your brush back here. And if you really have a hard time trying to add too much detail to something that you're trying to leave a little bit looser, back up, stretch out your arm and paint like this. I mean, that is like way far away, but that is going to force you to work in a more loose style if that's something that you struggle with. No little brushes, use a bigger brush, use even bigger if you need to, and just you can try to get all the detail you want, you're just not, so it forces you to be looser. So it's just a trick to loosen up your style. Now, I don't wanna go all the way up to the bird. Normally, when I paint a background, I wanna make sure that background goes all the way up, looks like it goes completely behind the bird. I want a lot of that glow, a lot of that orange, I want poking through for me. Um, where is his tail? This is his tail. And this is just my black and white. I did put Payne's gray in it, but it was too, I didn't realize that Payne's gray was that translucent. So I don't want that. I wanted it more opaque, which is why I just mixed my own with the um, titanium white and Mars black, or I'm sorry, that's just the Weber's Permala black. As I get down here, same thing. I want some of the orange, don't cover it all. I would rather you not cover enough and then go back and cover it as needed than to cover too much right now. I mean, you can always wipe it off if you need to, but I'd rather not. So again, just mixing a little bit of my black. Black is going to take over the white, so I wanna do that a little bit more slowly. I'm gonna start pulling some of my phthalo blue in now, but I don't want it that bold, so I'm going to be mixing a decent amount of black and white into it to give me more of a grayish tint. There we go. And again, let those brush strokes show. I want heavy brush strokes in here. Oh, that's what my other tip was. Don't do this. We don't want the same brush stroke in the same direction again and again and again. What we're trying to do, and I'm just mixing a little bit of, of my liquid in there to make that flow better. But what we're doing, we want back and forth in different directions. We want variation here. See how I'm twisting and turning the brush, flipping it over. Now we can layer while it's still wet as long as we give it a little bit of time to tack up a bit because this is going to, even in tonight's painting, it will the paint will start to tack up just a little, meaning it's, it's almost sticky instead of too slippery. Now I'm gonna start pulling a lot more with the black towards the top. Looks like a little bit of red from the palette got mixed into that, which is fine. And see how I'm, again, let those brush strokes show. Don't hot, don't cover all of whatever your background color was. Now I did a sample of this. I, my original, the reference photo that I'm using, which can also be found on my website, that one I did as a digital painting. And I also did one version where it had an aqua color, which completely changed the look, but was also very pretty. You can go with any color you want in the background. Ideally, just make sure it's bright enough that it'll show. You know, want to make sure that's the big thing right now. Make sure I don't cover too much of the orange. And it's so hard because normally when I paint, I'm trying to make sure I cover that background. Not with this style. I think you can pull some down here. Don't repeat the same brush stroke though. Some are smaller, some are longer. 
And like down here, I want it to be lighter. I'm just gonna put some white on top of that and let it blend in. Okay, I don't wanna to go too much darker there, so let's bring some white down here. Again, letting those brush strokes show, just different directions. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start in on the branch. This is actually a very fast pro process. Um, I'm going to pretty much be using the same colors, just lightening them up. But if you need, so I don't need to clean my paintbrush at this point. The next bit of supplies that you absolutely need are going to be Viva paper towels. You either want to use an old t-shirt, an old rag, or Viva paper towels. Your normal like bounty, while I like for everyday household chores or for acrylic painting, I prefer bounty, but with oil painting, using a bounty paper towel with oils would be the equivalent of trying to dry your paint brushes off or white paint off with like computer paper. That, that it does not work well. It doesn't play nice with oils. You want Viva if you're gonna use a paper towel or an old rag. And some people will say that those blue towels like that you use in shops and stuff, that the, the paper towels, but they're the shop rat, shop ones, that those, no, it's still not as good as Viva. They, they are st better than Bounty, but not great. Trust me on the Viva thing. I'm not a huge fan of those paper towels for anything else, but for oils, they are a must. So because this is not going to be, I don't need to really change colors. I can just go ahead and start putting the branch in now with the same colors that are on the brand, the brush. Just wiping that on there. Again, I want that orange, I need that to show through for this style. Now I'm going to just lift some white, put my highlight. If you wanted to add browns or anything like that, you certainly could for me. For this one, I'm keeping it very simple. I'm really only using black, white, and phthalo blue. Sort of Payne's gray, but sort of not because the one I have is too translucent. And I can come back through once this sets a little bit. I want this to tack up so I can get a few more brush strokes in there, but it'll hit a point where if the paint is still wet and you're not letting it dry, or at least in my case, I want to let it tack up a bit, then it's you just start creating mud. And that's the problem that a lot of people have with, a, with oils or the complaint that a lot have is that they just created mud. Well, yeah, you kept making too many brush strokes in the same area that was still wet. And you just mixed every, mushed everything together. So if you can get used to that, to when you need to stop and let it dry, I think it's a very, it's one of the easiest mediums to really get good at. much more so than acrylics. See how I'm leaving these rougher brush strokes as I build up that branch? And now I'm gonna wipe that. So I'm just gonna take my paper towel. These are actually used from what I was painting last week. It should be dry enough and go ahead and wipe that off. And I don't even need to reload the brush or like I don't have to rinse out the brush. I can use what is on there. I don't care if some of the grays mix in with it. I do want a little bit more black though. Now the Weber's Permalba Black, it takes over. Like it is dark, dark. So you have to be careful when you load that. If I were using the Windsor & Newton Black, I don't find that it gets that dark. Like it, it it's too muted for me. I, I don't like it. I never buy it. Can you use it like if I have a student come in with it? Yeah, absolutely. It's not one that I say I can't teach with, but it is one that if given the choice, I'm certainly gonna go with the Weber's Permalba Black. It, it'll make your life way easier. See how dark that stays? If I was using the Windsor & Newton one because of this mixing in with the colors already on the, the canvas, it's not going to be that dark. Now, some people may prefer something that's more muted, but this is my preference for sure. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. Now this is one of the bonuses with oils. I can just set this brush to the side and leave it there and that is not going to dry tonight. So I can be a little bit sloppier with my materials or messier. I need, is this it? Yeah, so I'm just gonna go with a slightly smaller brush now. And I'm gonna start with the lighter colors because it's always easier to get the dark with the black. And let's start in with 
his face here. I'm just going to start with white. It's got a little bit of gray mixed in, that's fine. And same thing, I'm just letting some of that orange, little bits of that are going to keep showing through. And we've got some white on his chest. And as I move my way down, I'm going to start pulling more of the gray and blue I used in the background. So we get that nice shadow. And now I'm going to go even darker with the blue and the black. I'm not going to go just straight black, although that black probably just took over it. I want a little bit more blue in there. There we go. See, again, I've got a little bit of that orange peeking through on his head. And I'm going to use this brush for even the beak. Even though it feels big, this is one of the ways that you're going to force yourself to keep things very loose. I'm pretty happy with how the oils, even with this style, are sticking to this canvas. I was a little bit worried it might be too smooth, but it's doing well. So we've got this wing. Now the only brush I'm gonna switch to a small brush for is the eye. And actually I can do that right now. Do I have one over here? I should. That'll work. And it's not even a super tiny brush, but it'll work for this. And then I'll do the highlight. Good enough for now. Okay. Back to, now we've got everything blocked in. Now we just start refining things. Where maybe is there too much of the orange showing through that might need to be toned down a little? Like some of these are big chunks, bigger than what I want. So we're gonna start toning a lot of that down now that we've got it mapped out. And some of this, you don't even have to use a brush because the oils are wet. You can just take a clean brush that has no paint on it yet and just start smudging with that. Just don't overdo it. I don't have to keep adding paint I can do a little bit of blending with the wet paint on the canvas. You know, some of these are just a bit, like I want the glow, just not that much glow. Because if I keep adding paint, it starts getting almost slippery and makes it very difficult to um, get paint to really stick. Now, right now, everything looks a little bit fuzzy. We're going to certainly be doing some detail work a little bit. Once we get a slightly softer look here. Okay, I want that orange to be a bit more subtle. Now that I'm loving. Okay, um, and this brush, again, I, all I did was just slightly blend what was already there. Just soften a few of these brush strokes out. Now, back to the details. The chickadee needs some work. So I am going to wipe the paint off that's on the brush. Again, I don't even need to thin this in paint thinner. You notice, this is another thing. A lot of artists, when they work with oils, they use paint thinner on everything. They thin the paint with it. They're constantly cleaning the brushes with it. You don't, I usually use it to clean my brushes at the end. I will, you, well, I use way too many brushes, but I'll have 10 or 20 brushes out and I've got a set of brushes that I'm using for my light colors and a set for the dark and I don't even have to rinse in between because I just wipe off the paint and it just, it makes it easier. So let's go ahead and pull some blue. We want some highlights with that light blue. Maybe a little bit more white. 
This would be, if I weren't painting on a live stream where I had, you know, a deadline on when this gets done, I would probably take a break, go walk away for a half hour, an hour, and let it set a little bit so that the paint sticks better, but it'll be fine. I just have to be a little bit more careful because of the, it is a little bit wet. And I'm putting it on a lot thicker now. I'm not having to add as much liquid because there is already liquid on the canvas mixed in with that paint. That canvas is perfectly wet. I don't need to keep adding liquid from my palette at this point. So you have to put that paint on pretty thick in order for that to show. I'm gonna wipe that brush off again. And this is why it's going to take me at least three weeks before I send this out because this is getting pretty thick on there. Now what happens if something goes horribly wrong? Wipe it off, do it again. Now then I use a little bit of paint thinner to wipe it off with a paper towel if you need to. And I think this style of painting works really well too if you're interested in oil painting in a sketchbook. Now you would need to use a gesso first on the paper. Um, use a heavier weight paper, gesso it, and then you can oil paint. This style is so great for that, for these quicker little studies. So I'm just holding the brush to the side, getting the detail that I want there, same with the eye. What do I want to work on next while this is setting? I guess we need some more of the blue on the face with a lot of white. Yes, the legs will be added. And the big thing, don't over blend. It's gonna be so tempting because like a few brush strokes, it looks so good. And this is what I used to see with students all the time when I worked in person with them, is they would do a couple brush strokes, they'd get to this, far and go, this point and go, oh my gosh, it looks so good how it's blended. So I'm gonna keep blending. And it ends up just being a muddy mess. That's where that mud you hear about with oils come from. It blends so easily, but it blends so easily. So don't overdo that. See, I'm putting this on super thick at that point to make it really show up. And I'm gonna switch back to the small brush for the feet. I'm just not completely done blending. You know, I'm probably done with the body enough. At least that portion, portion, I guess I can use the small brush. So I lied, I'm not just gonna use the small brush for the legs, but Here's the thing, I wanna keep a, a soft look. If I hold the brush up here like I normally might for, for oils or for painting detail, I'm not gonna get a loose look. I want this to be loose, well, loose. <laughs> keep your hand back here. Keep, and hold, if you, again, if you're struggling, back yourself up, paint it from a distance. We just wanna get the hint of the feet, the toes. a little bit of that black up in here so that blends in and I'm going to blend that a bit more as well. And do the same thing, just the little highlights with this brush. See again, very loose. It has to be loose. Like th that is your only option when you're holding the brush back here and especially using a bigger brush for smaller details. And now we can just sit, I mean, most of the stuff is in there. We just sit and focus on a few little areas that we want cleaner. Don't overdo this though. I would rather, again, take a break, go walk away for an hour, come back and look at, what, look at it with fresh eyes and decide if you need to add anything. I don't like where that orange is right there. We'll just tone that down a little bit.
need to get a little bit of shading on his cheek. And this paint is really thick. Notice, again, I'm not going into the liquid in the center. I don't want any more liquid. Too much liquid is on this canvas. I keep adding more and it's just a slippery mess of things not sticking. I want the paint to start feeling sticky at this point to start setting. And it's not that it's dry, but it starts getting sticky enough that other layers can stick on top. But I keep adding liquid. It's just, a, it's completely slippery. So this is just straight paint, real thick brushes here. Now, I don't always paint this way. If I am not painting wet into wet constant like this, then I'm going to just let it dry. I do thin layers, use liquid on everything, like the, uh, the piece that I just finished that I posted on social media the other day, the cuttlefish and the, the marine painting. That, the oil painting layers, very, very thin. Everything was thinned with, everything was thinned with liquid. But, so again, completely different style, completely different techniques. There are so many different techniques you'll use for one medium, depending on the look that you're going for. It's not that, and I think people have a tendency to do this, especially younger artists, where they learn one technique and they think that now that technique needs to be applied across the board forever for everything. And that's just not how it works. It depends on the look you're going for, the style you're going for. You're going to adjust your technique completely. These brush strokes all over the place are not typically how I paint with oil. Like when the cuttlefish one that you saw, the marine one I posted on, I think I posted it on all the social media platforms I use this last week. And it's, none of it was this thick, but completely different style, so different techniques are used. It's not one style fits everything or one technique fits everything. And I see that a lot where I was talking about that on, on this, um, this week's email newsletter about unsolicited advice, but you have people, especially those who went to college, and not everyone who went to college for art is like this, but so many that are like this, they happen to go to college. So it's, they, um, their college professor told them something and they think that that is a rule for life for everything related to art and that's just not how art works. You've got to be willing to experiment and try some different things. It just depends on the style you're going for. And I don't want to overdo this. Um, that's going to be a, a concern on this one is to make sure you don't do too many brush strokes. We're keeping it pretty simple here. I'm gonna wipe this brush off. More thick white paint. Just a nice little fluffy cheek there. I'm gonna go back with the black for his eye. Let's darken this a little bit more. I'm so tempted to sit and do detail with that, but see, that's what I mean, put it down. You got, I got a couple of spots that I can do the little detail and then put it down, go back to your bigger brush. The white will go right under his eye, there we go. I'm gonna pull the black a little bit higher under his cheek as well. So it's not that I can't sit and fuss over things. It's just that it's a loose style. So I still want the dark areas in the right place. I just don't wanna sit there painting every little perfect feather. This style will also really help you to focus on your values because in, we have a tendency to depend on detail too much, especially when we're new. We depend on detail for perfecting everything in our art or defining things. And we really want to start working more on, that's one of the biggest weak spots for a lot of artists is working on your values more. And this will force that because you are not dependent on details. I don't like how dark that is. It's a little bit darker on camera than in person, but I wanna soften that a bit. And he's just about done. Again, you can bid on him. The link is in the video description if you want to own this cute little chickadee. Otherwise, I'm probably keeping him. I personally love this look. 
you'll probably see me do a few more live streams like this with the, the glow from behind just peeking through. Oops, I'm gonna remove that chunk. I'm gonna wipe that brush again. Not a single time did I need to clean my brush and paint thinner to make this work. I just kept wiping the paint off. paint and draw but you don't have any experience or your drawing skills aren't that good, join over 1,100 students and follow along with over 300 painting and drawing lessons. There are over 675 hours worth of lessons and new ones every week just waiting to turn you into a master. The great thing about these classes are that you get to do them from your own home in your own time. If you're taking in-person classes, often it's very hard where you're either falling behind, you're trying to rush to keep up with other students, or you're working faster than the other students waiting for them to catch up to you. With my classes, there is no time limit. You can work at your own pace, whatever feels comfortable for you. Join before October and you will lock in my 2014 prices. That gives you all of these lessons for as little as $4 a month, plus bonus content to help you master your medium.